Hello, the lovelies. So, forgive me if I get a little short or a little confused. I have made a list of what I'm supposed to talk about, but life is happening and life does happen. And you cannot always anticipate that even when producing content. This video is me creating a Christmas skirt. Um, right before the winter holidays started, I may I went to Joann's to find materials to make Christmas presents with. And while there, I noticed they were having a sale on fabric, specifically flannel fabric. And I found this really cute, really interesting flannel fabric that had vintage inspired trailers like camping trailers and I decided why not so I got four yards of it because it was a 45 inch fabric and I made this skirt which is Simplicity's 9288 this is a pattern by Gertie before she switched over to Butterick and again I'm doing the skirt will eventually do one of the tops probably the short sleeve version so I'd have it for summer but that the tops are done with knits skirt is done with uh, woven fabrics any type of woven fabrics and I chose to do this in uh, the cotton flannel however the cotton flannel one issue with it it shrinks a and B it has a directional pattern so, instead of following their cutting layout, I ended up just cutting four of the back piece, basically, so that I would have enough space to be able to have all the trailers going in one direction. I did not do this perfectly because the trailers don't match up, so they're kind of off kilter, but with how much pleating is going on, it's kind of hard to tell that. The pattern itself was kind of difficult to get the pleats to lay down right. I probably did not do it correctly, but they're basically a double box pleat, and then they're supposed to flare out to a full circle skirt. So it's a little bit interesting doing it, but um, next time I do it, I'm probably just going to match up the pleats and directly sew them up and down, as opposed to matching up to one marking and then matching them all together because that creates tends to create a gap for me. So next time I think I'll just match up the markings and sew them up and down and then press them in place and then baste along the top instead of basting each pleat down. But that's, that was one issue I found with it. Um, Other than that, it's a relatively easy pattern to follow. She really goes into depth about doing zippers. And if I do this pattern again for the skirt itself, I will try to video me doing the zipper and how I do it. I do think I might switch to doing uh, zippers by hand, at least partially. Um, I want to see how it goes because I always have a, the difficulty of fabric moving when I do zippers, so, um, yeah, I'll try something different next time. So, other than that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe down below if you like it. If not, feel free to dislike it. That is perfectly fine, too. So, I will see you all next time. Bye. So, I am following the pattern, basically. I do make a couple changes simply because I had to fussy cut the front of the skirt out, meaning I have to piece the front of the skirt so it lines up. But on the back, I thread marked each of these pleats. So you start with the outside pleats, and you match the markings together, and then you will baste down the pleat on the fold of the skirt. It was really confusing when I was trying to do this reading the instructions. I do think the next time I do this I'm just going to match outside to outside and sew them together and match um, 
inside pleat to inside pleat and sew that together and just then iron it flat and baste along the top. I am not enthused about how they recommended you do this pleating method. It just seemed kind of counterproductive to me, but that's me. And also, it left again. I did not like this gown. But this was rather cheap material. I got it on sale. It is just a cotton flannel. It's adorable print. It's a really adorable print, at least in my mind. And it's relatively also, I do think next time I make this skirt, I will lengthen it probably about two inches, just for personal preference. I do enjoy wearing this skirt, it just feels a little bit short on me. I have long legs, and I like having skirts that reach past my knees. Again, personal preference. However, I did like how they advised you set in the zip. I have made a decision that next time I do zippers, I will be hand sewing them because trying to do a zipper is just enough of a hassle to not have to, yeah, it's just a huge hassle doing zippers. It's a huge hassle doing closures, so next time I think I will probably just try and do it by hand and see if that helps. Once the zipper has been set, then you uh, sew the rest of the back of the skirt up. And then once the skirt is sewn up, well here I'm setting the second half of the zipper. So once the second half of the skirt is, well once the back of the skirt is sewn up, then I have to sew the front of the skirt, put in those pleats, and then set in pockets. Because pockets are important. You like to have pockets, don't you? I do. Um, but yes. This pattern is relatively easy to follow. I got rather confused about the pleating method they were using, but again, just speaking from experience, next time I will do my own method of pleating. I... yeah. And these seam allowances are kind of ridiculous, but this method is set up to be able to do French seams very easily. You have an inch and a half of the seam allowance. So, yeah. Lots of space to pieces. So here I am getting ready to sew the rest of the back seam in. And once that is sewn up, I will iron the seam to set the seam, then iron the seam allowance open. I did cut this so that the back seam was on a um, selvage edge so, so it won't unravel. Um, yeah, I just did that because I thought it'd be a little bit easier and it was. I, I still ended up somehow managing to stretch the fabric, but it works out. Once that's, once the back is done, then again, I have to pleat the front up after having sewn it. And once it is pleated, then I have to uh, put on pockets on both sides, both the front and the back. And I do like this pocket shape. So I will probably use it on other patterns, but I have difficulty um, enjoying the whole process of sewing this pattern. I really think it was just the pleats. It was rather aggravating trying to finagle these pleats to match up. I really think that next time I will just sew front pleat the front pleat and back pleat, pleat the back pleat, and then iron it. Doing this method could make more sense, but I probably didn't cl get close enough to the edge and it was just a very big ass. So here I am getting ready to set the pockets. I did just use um, scraps from give me the front of the material, so I wasn't really caring if it was, um, well, 
set in particularly nicely because it is scrap material from this pattern. But pockets are nicely sized. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the issues I have. Oh, they wanted to um, wiggle on me. But that may just have been I wasn't using the right material or it just may have just wanted to wiggle. But here I am French seaming these, uh, the side seam as well as the pocket up. Um, I will say that next time I do this, I probably won't French seam the pocket itself. Doing that made the pocket, pocket edges very bulky and rather difficult to turn. So I think next time I do this, I will probably French seam the side, leave the pocket open and then press and finish the French seam and then while I'm finishing the French seam do the um, pocket at the same time as I do that. That would probably be a little bit easier and less bulky. I can always go through and finish the seam edges of the pockets themselves. At this point the whole thing just looks like a big mound of fabric which is kind of it's a pleated circle skirt that's basically what it is. So yes. Once I've got the pockets assembled, then it'll be time for the waistband. Um, with the waistband, I probably should have used a smaller seam allowance towards the edges. Simply because I'm kind of like right in between sizes at the moment. But yes, once you've got your um, waistband attached, you just flip it in so, uh, so the out right side of the fabric is on the outside, making a giant re rectangle tube. Um, I do recommend that once you have the waistband flipped so the so that the right side of the fabric is out, you then iron and not try to sew it immediately. Simply because if you don't, then your material will try to uh, wiggle on you and you may end up with a crooked or um, uneven waistband. So uh, iron after you have sewn the waistband Iron, make sure you iron the seams a couple times. If you feel like that seam might pop on you, I would recommend going through and uh, doing a second line of stitching on the actual seam for the waistband. So that if you are nervous about it, that it will definitely hold. Um, yeah, I just do a second line of stitching, maybe a quarter inch, eighth of an inch away from the first line, line of stitching in the seam allowance so that it will line up. These pockets, I will say, do not do what the other pocket pattern I have does, which is feed into the waistband. Personally, I like the feeding into the waistband one a little bit better. However, these ones are good for princess seamed garments where you don't have a waistband. However, next time I do this skirt, I will probably be doing the other pocket pattern I have because I like the way it hangs a little bit better. Uh, with this pocket pattern, you can't really put anything too heavy in it. It's a good size, don't get me wrong, but you can't really do anything heavy in it or it'll pull the line of the skirt out. When you have the pocket that sits inside the waistband, it fit, just sits better. So here is the actual skirt. As you see, this is after I've washed it, so the pleats aren't sitting quite right probably need to uh, press it after I wash it. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next time. Bye!